Hello everyone, you're listening to and watching me, Paul Gilbert, from Mr. Big Racer X and my solo career on Linnea Rock. Brilliant. Welcome back to Italy, Mr. Paul Gilbert. It's an honor for us to have you here. And um, you come actually very often to our country. Seems you have a very good relation with it. And you also signed with an Italian label with Mr. Big. Mm -hmm. So how special is Italy for you? Well, I think I'm a typical rock musician in that I travel all over the world and the good part is I get to travel all, all over the world. The difficult part is I don't have very much time because I'm working. I've, I've got to play, I've got to sound check, I've got to do all these things. So um, the way that I usually experience different countries is through the food. And Italian food is fantastic. It's one of the best places in the world to eat. <laughs> and I love to eat, so I'm always very happy and excited to come to Italy and have some real Italian food because it's the best here. Great. And we love you too. <laughs> okay, how much is different uh, your music approach when you work for your solo stuff than when you work for Mr. Big or all the other bands you work with? That's a good question. Um, I guess it depends on, on two things. The, the, uh, the songs and the people. And when... Uh, I think I always try to play for the song, so if I'm if I'm writing for, you know, my own stuff, my, my songs are pretty varied. I mean, sometimes I'll do you know, something pop or something heavy or something classical or something blues, so I just try to play for whatever the style is. Um, I think with, with Racer X, it's almost always heavy metal, so I try to play heavy metal with that. And with Mr. Big, Mr. Big's pretty varied as well. We have some heavy stuff, we have some pop stuff. So, you know, the way I'll play in a song like To Be With You is very different than the way I'll play and a heavier Mr. Big song like Daddy Brother, Lover Little Boy. So um, I think it, it helps me grow and expand as a musician to have to adapt to all those different songs. You are classified among, you know, the best uh, guitarists in the world and of all times as well uh, for your technique and your speed in playing. Uh, is that really something that make any difference for you um, in a sense or... Well, it's very nice of you to say, uh, but there's, there's so many great guitar players and I think I've, I've been fortunate because I've been not only recognized as a guitar player, but I've been in bands that have done pretty well. Mm -hmm. Mr. Big, we had a number one single, we sold millions of albums, so you know, that gives me an advantage of being well known, where there's, there's some amazing guitar players who can do things I could never do, who never had a number one record, so not so many people know about them. So it's, it's impossible to compare. I mean, there's so many great musicians all over the world. Uh, but as far as you know, technique and speed, I think when I was a kid, I, my parents had a lot of classical albums. So I got the sound of classical music in my ear. And in general, classical music is played by virtuoso musicians. If you hear a classical piano player or a classical violinist, they're really good. They can really play their instrument. And I felt sort of an obligation to have the same uh, ma mastery of, of the guitar. Uh, or that's what I wanted. I'm still working on it. But uh, I wanted to rock and I wanted to go crazy. I wanted to play exciting music, but I also wanted to almost like earn my guitar degree. You know, I wanted to be able to say, look, you know, I can, I can really play in any style. I, I can, you know, do those basic, basic scales, you know, school kind of things. And then uh, any style I want to put on top of that, I can do. I and, and which is your personal top five guitarists of all time? Let's see, well, the, f the first that come to my head are uh, Jimmy Page, um, mainly because of his writing. I mean, certainly he, he wasn't the best technician, but it didn't matter because the songs were so great and the, you, you understood what he was trying to tell you with, with guitar. And uh, I love Eddie Van Halen. Uh, he was a huge influence on me. So those are probably the big two that everybody knows. Yeah. The, the, uh, the other ones that maybe are lesser known, but there's still a huge influence on me. One maybe would be Alex Lifeson from Rush. I was a huge Rush fan when I was a kid and I learned a lot of his, uh, especially his rhythm playing. I learned so many Rush songs. Um, Robin Trower was a huge influence. 
Robin Schrauer is very similar to, in style to Jimi Hendrix, mm. so, but he's a little bit more refined and, and, and modern. So I sort of got my Hendrix through Robin Schrauer. And mm. maybe the last one I would say would be uh, maybe Pat Travers, mm. who had uh, some amazing guitar records, one called Go For What You Know, which is a live record, mm -hmm. and one called uh, Crash and Burn. And both those records are very influential on me. There's so many more, but I have to stop at five since that's your <laughs> assignment. Okay. Um, and how much uh, choosing the proper gear uh, is important for you? And how that changed uh, through the years, through your career? I mean, is a matter of taste, necessity, endorsement deals. Uh, how did it work for you? Well, I, I love guitars and amps and pedals and all those, all those things. Those are my toys. So... Uh, <laughs> I, I really enjoy them. Uh, I think electric guitar is one of the most... You can get really different sounds depending on the equipment. Uh, you can get a very clean sound or a very distorted sound, you know, and so many things in between with different effects. So it's, it's, it's different than like a, a trumpet. You know, a mm -hmm. trumpet kind of has one sound. I mean, maybe you can put a, a muse in it. Um, but... Uh, Definitely this, the sound influences how you play. If you have a, a lot of sustain, then you might sustain more. If you don't have a lot of sustain, then you might pick more. You know, it's, each, each sound will influence you. So I think, uh, again, I sort of choose it for the song. If, uh, I, you know, it just depends on what the song calls for. But most of the music I play is rock, so I tend to play with a rock sound. Okay. And uh, lately, I think the, the more that I've been playing... The more I, I like sustain, and so I've been using bigger strings and and bigger necks, okay. and and uh, those things give the guitar more resonance. And so uh, the, the the latest model of guitar that I've been using, mm -hmm. uh, is a, a, the model's called a Fireman, and I uh, just, just sort of designed it myself. And it's it's just, the sustain is so good on it because it's got a great big neck joint. And the, the neck is slightly shorter, so I can put bigger strings on, and st it's still easy to bend the strings, but the big strings have great sustain, so I think uh, that's what I'm looking for, is more sustain. So you design it yourself, um, but you stick pretty much your whole career with Ibanez, mm -hmm. and uh, so I, I guess you feel very comfortable with that. You are in a... Well, they're one of the, <laughs> Ibanez is one of the few companies that will let the artists design something in themselves. Yeah. Okay. Um, when... When I first started working with them, it was in the, the mid-80s. And at the time, I was just starting to become popular with Racer X. And because of that, many guitar companies were offering me you know, to, to work with their, their, their companies. And I was, I was so happy. Like, oh my God, I can't believe I have a chance to, to do this. But um, you know, when I would talk to certain companies, I'd, I'd say, oh, well, I like your guitar, but can I change this and change this and change this? And they'd go, no. You know, we can. It's only you know this guitar is what we make. It's, that's that's it. Okay. But Ibanez was very open to, uh, to to listening to my ideas, and and they said, you know, we want to make the guitar for musicians, and you're a musician. So, if you've got an idea, we'll try it. And did you ever try to modify guitars yourself? I mean, something that you yeah, like the, to do sometimes. Well, when, I, when I was a kid, okay. um, I used to <laughs> just buy cheap guitars. You know, for that were you know a, a, maybe a friend of mine would have a guitar in the closet right. that he had broken. <laughs> and I'd take it home and try to, my dad and I would try to fix it and we'd do stuff to it. Great. And mostly just end up ruining things. But I, I learned a lot about guitars that way. You mentioned uh, various influences uh, from yourself. Uh, you mentioned various influences. Oh, yeah. um, the Beatles, Pink Floyd, Jackson 5 as well, sure. I heard. And, um, and then I remember you uh, mentioning that you felt in love with guitar solos, uh, listening to Kiss Alive 2, and that you were playing in your room, Shock Me, oh, with yeah. all the solo and so on. Uh, is this uh, melting pot uh, the key of your versatility also today? Yeah, I, s I still listen to so much different music. And... Uh, yeah, just as a fan. Uh, I mean, I still love the stuff I grew up on, but uh, I'm, I'm always searching for new things, and uh, when I find them, and that really, you know, to, to play anything, it's got to be in your ear first. Yeah. Uh, 
you know, you have to know how it's going to sound before you play it. Otherwise, you know, it's like painting with a blindfold on. You just don't know. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, and, and the way to get music in your head is to listen to it. And, and I think, you know, once you get those sounds in your head, you can, then you can, you can, the melting pot is a good analogy. That's, that's pretty accurate, at least for me. Yeah. Of just, you know, you have, uh, you develop tools, you know, when you, if you listen to blues, you learn how to bend and do vibrato. If you listen to classical music, you learn how to do scales and arpeggios. If you listen to pop music, you learn how to do chords. Uh, and then when you have your own musical idea, you have those tools to work with. So I, I remember hearing uh, the Beatles song, Martha, My Dear, mm -hmm. which is a piano song. Yeah. And, th and thinking to myself, if the Beatles had never written that, and suddenly that song just dropped out of the sky into my head, I, would, I wouldn't be able to use it because I can't play piano. And so I started figuring out all these piano songs on guitar. Yeah. Because I wanted to learn, like, how to play piano but on guitar. All right. And, uh, and it really expanded my chord knowledge and finger picking. And yeah. so, uh, you know, I, I didn't want to have, I wanted to avoid that situation. Right? You know, to me, if, if, if an idea drops into my head, I don't want to miss it. I want to be able to play it. And even if it's something that might be more of a pianoish idea, I don't want to be limited just because I'm a guitar player. Right. And concerning tribute albums, um, you've done a lot through the mm -hmm. years. I mean, when they call you, you always go, seems, uh, and me. Uh, you've done Sabbath, Alice Cooper, Maiden, Purple, Kiss, oh, yeah. uh, Jason Baker as well. Mm -hmm. And you never say no. Um, is that pure fun for you? What does it that mean to you to do that that kind of records? Well, there, I mean, any kind of music is fun to me, but I think uh, each one is different because some of the some of the bands, you know, I know really well and they're like I'm you know passionate about. Mm -hmm. Others I've heard of, but I'm not as familiar with. Like, you know, I grew up playing some Alice Cooper songs, but I'm, I don't I really don't know that much about Alice Cooper. So that one I'd, I'd go in and they'd play me the and I would just try to do something to, to fit yeah. the song. But um, I've done a lot of live stuff as well. Like with Mike Portnoy, I put together some some live things. We did a, a tribute to the Beatles. Yeah, Yellow and, and Matter. Yellow Matter Custard. Custard yeah. And uh, we did a, one for the, the Who and Rush and Led Zeppelin. And those bands I, I love. So that was really yeah. j just completely for fun. I had such a good time doing that. You are the master, one of the masters of the sixth string. Um, we have a lot to learn from Paul Gilbert, uh, but did it ever happen uh, that you maybe learned something uh, even about yourself during guitar clinics? Uh, and how much is practice still important for you today? Oh, I, I learned so much, but I learned the most when I give one-on-one -on -one lessons, okay. which I love to do whenever I go home to Hollywood. Uh, there's I live very close to the guitar school that I went to when I was 17, which is called GIT, yeah. inside of uh, Musicians Institute. Right. So uh, I try to go there as much as I can, and, and it's funny because they, I think they would prefer if I did a big guitar clinic for the whole school, but I always say, no, I, I just want to do, I just want to jam one-on-one -on -one with, with the students. Uh -huh. And uh, I learn a lot because, I mean, we're we're all guitar players. I mean, you know, it's, so we're all struggling with the same instrument. Yeah. We all have the same challenges. And when I see a student that, that's trying to do something and they can't quite do it, um, it reminds me of my own struggles. Yeah. And even if I'm more advanced, I, it just reminds me like I can still, I might still need to improve that. And, uh, yeah, just, I'm just, you know, hanging out with musicians, you know, sometimes it's not even so much a, a lesson, it's just hanging out with other guitar players and yeah. just trading information. That's how but, you live it, okay. And so much of it is just listening, mm -hmm. just hearing somebody play, and you know, it doesn't matter what language they speak, they speak music, and that, that's, that's the biggest thing. Mm -hmm. But I learned so much from the students, that's improved me more than anything. Yeah. Uh, and how many guitars do you own now, acoustic uh, and electric? Oh, well, I don't, I don't remember exactly. My, my, uh, my business manager makes me make a list. All right. So for the insurance. <laughs> and I, I, looked, I looked at it the other day. I think it's 80-something. Wow. I can't remember. But um, a lot of them, the reason, I think the reason I have so many is um, 
I've been working with Ibanez for a really long time, and they've released so many Paul Gilbert models okay. over the years. So I have one of all those. And many times I have the prototype as well. Okay. Because maybe the prototype we were working on, making some changes. Okay. So I get the prototype, then they send me the, the real one. And uh, I think over the years I've had almost 20 different uh, Ibanez models. Wow. And then a lot that, that were prototypes that, that were never released. So, you know, that, that, that it just adds up over the years. Do you think that uh, the role of guitar changed in rock music from the 50s or s to now, I mean, or simply it evolved? Oh, I think, um, when I think about guitar and, and rock music, what, one thing that I think has happened is when I grew up in, in the 70s and, and 80s, the, the most famous guitar players were in bands. Jimmy Page from Led Zeppelin, Eddie Van Halen from Van Halen, uh, you know, Alex Lyson from Rush. And I think in, uh, in the mid to late 80s, it started to change where uh, guitar players started to become like uh, solo artists or um, doing instrumental music, like Joe Satriani, Steve Vai, Tuna McAlpine. And I still tried to be in a band, like I tried to do, do Racer X, which is a singer. And I really didn't want to go the instrumental route. Of course, Mr. Big was a band, but uh, but still, the initially, you know, that, that it did very well. Joe Satriani did very well with his stuff. Steve I did very well. And uh, but what ended up happening is now there's this small niche of guitar music, and only guitar players listen to it. Okay. And I don't like that. Hmm. I, I wish that I, I want great guitar players to be listened to by everybody. So I think um, I don't know if I can do anything to change it, but if I can, I want to try to encourage guitar players. Don't just make music that only guitar players can listen to. Try to make music with a singer with good songs that that can be listened to by everybody. And that way, it's not just some tiny little weird niche. It's it's it's. You know, because music is, is for everyone. It shouldn't just be for certain people. Concerning this, do you think that Mr. Big, being, you know, such a huge band, successful band, help people understand that when you are a virtuoso, when you are able to play very good, you got big talent, the most important thing is to know, be able to write great songs? Do you think that Mr. Big helped a lot, in a sense, this attitude? Uh, oh, let's see. Well, I hope so. It's, it's, it's hard to know. Um, I think w when I look at the Mr. Big audience, because of course I, I'm on stage, I'm looking at the audience, it's, it's very enjoyable for me because there's such a wide variety of people. There's, there's guys, there's girls, there's, there's older people, there's younger people, where uh, sometimes if I do like a guitar clinic, it's just all guys. <laughs> And maybe a couple, a couple guys got their brought their girlfriends, and the girlfriends are going like, "I told you I wouldn't like this. Take me home." You know. And, but uh, and it's funny too because at, at my guitar clinics, I I don't play guitar music. I try to play music that anyone would like to listen to. And uh, I was very happy the other day because we, we did a uh, I did a clinic, and. Uh, the, the my, my promoter was was talking to the, uh, the the guy who was running the lights. Yeah. And the guy who was running the lights looked over and he said, he said, I don't know anything about guitar, but this is great. And that's that's the perfect. That's that I couldn't the hope for a better compliment. response. Best compliment, yeah. <laughs> because you know, I, uh, I I really want you know it's music. It should be enjoyed by anybody, not just guitar players. And the bat baptism of fire in your career has been Racer X, which was uh, a great band, another huge talented band. Which are the best memories that you cherish about that experience? Well, I, I just remember our third show, because at the beginning, of course, nobody knew who we were, and we were in, we were based out of Los Angeles, yeah. and uh, our first concert, you know, nobody really came. It was an kind of empty club, and second concert, a little better. And the, the, the third show we did, it was still in a club. And I remember we, you know, none of us, we, we didn't have very much money. So we had spent all our money like on a small magazine ad okay. or, you know, on the, on renting the van so we could bring the equipment to the show. Yeah. 
And I remember thinking, if, if nobody comes to the show tonight, we're going to starve because we don't have any money left. This is our only way. And so I was like in the, in the van that we had rented driving to the gig just going like, oh, man, I hope somebody shows up. You know, just, if, even if 50 people, it would be okay. And we, we got to the gig and the club was so crowded that I could barely get to the backstage. It was just, you know, just, you know, like a thousand people crammed in this tiny little club. And that was the first time when in my heart, I thought I might be able to be a musician as a professional. Oh, this, 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 this crazy idea I've had since I was a kid might work. Yeah, great story. Um, do you think that uh, it was easier or more difficult to create your own style without a computer and internet back in the days. I mean, back then you had to work hard, you know, even to understand what musicians were doing yeah. because it was not so immediate like it is today. Do you think that that was um, maybe a better way to do it or to create, to create your own style or it's better today that we have, you know, a lot of tools that can help? Oh, huh, that's, that's, that's interesting. Obviously, just like you said, now, you know, if you want to listen to some music, you just type it in and it's yeah. there. I remember as a kid, I wanted to hear uh, a record by Iggy and the Stooges yes. called Raw Power. Mm -hmm. And the local record store didn't have it, so I ordered it. And it took six months wow. for it to come in the mail. <laughs> mail order. Yeah, yeah. so, uh, you know, it's very different now. You know, now you just go to iTunes and you got it. Yeah. Um, I don't know, I think to, to, to become a, a great at anything, you know, music or, or any skill, you know, you have to put in a lot of practice, a lot of work, and so the, the, the key is, is both motivation and also lack of distraction. Yeah. Like when I look back to the, the great classical composers, when I think of, you know, Bach or Mozart or Scarlatti or Vivaldi or yeah. people from then, I mean, I mean they were one step further where they had no television, no radio, uh, you know, the transportation wasn't so easy, so maybe they didn't travel as much. Yeah. Um, and th th so when I see like the, uh, like Mozart wrote so much music, you know, if you, if you buy like the complete Mozart's uh, compositions, it's like, I don't know, it's like 50 CDs or something, or even more. Yeah. And I think like, you know, how could I ever write that much music? And uh, then I think, well, he didn't have TV. And so, you know, in a way, to really focus on something, it's, yeah. it's good to not have those distractions. Uh, you know, but once they're there, you know, how can you resist? It's like, you know, I want to hear Iggy and the Stooges now. You know? Yes, okay. sure. But do you think that maybe in 20 years would be more difficult to have, you know, another Eddie Van Halen, another Jimi Hendrix, I mean, innovators, because, you know, you have to... I think, yeah, maybe in that way, mm. but um, I think there will always be, there probably, I mean, there already are mm. innovators now that, that just innovate in a different way. When I hear modern pop music, to, to me, I, I'm blown away by the editing. Okay. It's, it's, it's not the playing anymore, it's the editing. They're okay. such great editors. Yeah. So when you hear a, a vocal performance, you know, who knows what it sounded like originally, but they've edited it to be so perfect. That's it's 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 really an amazing thing, and the the, the um, you know the the arrangements are, are are really really good, and they're not. It's a completely different sound than seventies rock, and seventies, sixties and seventies rock is my, that's where I come from, but you know when when I hear uh, you know Katy Perry or Lady Gaga, yeah, I go you know what it's it's really different, and it's it's obviously not a live performance which the old stuff was, and I love that. But whoever did the editing is a really good editor. And that's something, you know, that the computer has, has brought. Yeah. And it seems that album by album, you, Paul, uh, are looking for the ultimate rock guitar sound. Uh, will you ever find it, uh, in a sense? Or, you know, the fact that you like is to look for it, the searching of it. Uh, b both things, okay. um, and and really, I think um, to, to any listener, I probably just sound the same all the time. <laughs> I think <laughs> I think my you know it's it's mostly in the hands and the heart, and uh, 
but I, I think I enjoy experimenting with the with different music or different equipment and different tones, just because it's inspiring to me or. Uh, you know, it's, it makes it easier for me to sound like I sound. Right. I don't have to struggle as much. Uh, but, you know, it, it really it really comes from, comes from this thing moving around. And um, what do you think is your best performance, or at least the one you're most proud of in your career till now? Oh, let's see. For performance... No, um, I think uh, I'm always really focused on new things. Okay. So if I've if I've done it already, I don't, I don't really dwell on it. It's like okay, I've done that. You know, what's what's next? <laughs> okay. So like right now, I'm in Italy and I'm doing a, a clinic tour, and so I'm really interested in tonight. Yeah. You know, what am I going to do tonight? You know. So every night is different. Yeah, there's a lot of improvisation. Oh, okay. So, uh, and and I give myself challenges. I mean, this, this, the songs I'm doing are, are not easy for me to play. And I'm doing that so I can improve. You know, I don't, I don't want to just play the same thing over and over. I mean, that would be, in a way it would be easy, but I'd have to really start drinking. <laughs> <laughs> That's, you know, because if... Um, I think my, my, my mind needs a little bit of challenge. Oh. Or a little bit of something new, or it's just, or you know, it starts becoming a uh, feels like a job instead of an art. Um, you said that your experiences uh, on the G3 tour mm -hmm. back in 2007 actually helped uh, to inspire you to write uh, and record the Fuzz Universe. Uh, was it playing with those guys every night that inspired you, or uh, playing? an instrumental thing that actually inspired you in a different way. As you said before, it, that we had guitarists from Ben, now we have also solo guitarists. Yeah. Uh, so well, was well, that think, the experience? I, I think the, the biggest thing that, that affected me about that tour was, like I said, I, I've, I've always been sort of uh, careful or even fearful of the guitar niche. Yeah. It's like, I don't want to go there. I want to be in a band. <laughs> I want to have vocals. Um, so the, sometimes, uh, this is a funny thing that, that people do, or at least I do. I think that everybody in the world thinks like, it, thinks like me. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, of course I know it's not true, but I just, it's just <laughs> my, my intuitive feeling is like, oh, if I like something, then everyone must like it. All right. And uh, if, if I don't like something, maybe nobody likes that. <laughs> so, um, when I was on G3, the thing that blew me away was the audience. Because the audience loved guitar music, they could listen to guitar music for for I don't know how we, long we played. It was you know like four hours or something, and I can't listen to that much guitar music. <laughs> <laughs> but the audience was, was was going crazy the whole time. It was, it was big places, a lot of people. So I thought, you know, well if, if there's that many people that like it, and I I play the guitar, you know, I should try it. And, and you know is. If, instead of just you know standing back and criticizing the niche and saying like oh I don't like that, <laughs> maybe I can try to make some guitar music that I like. Okay. And you know, f it, it's worth it's worth a try. Yeah. And so and so my you know my three instrumental albums, Get Out of My Yard, Silence Followed by It of Any Roar, and Fuzz Universe have been experiments right. to see if I can get myself to like guitar instrumental music, and I like some of it. Would you ever repeat the G3 experience? If you have the chance to? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's really, it's a fun audience to play for. Okay. Um, Mr. Big changed your life forever, we must say. Uh, did you ever think uh, about your life and career would have been without him in the last 20 years? I mean, what if, yeah. you know, Mr. Big or you and Billy didn't meet back then? Did you ever think about it? Well, if I hadn't... Played with, uh, like, for example, if I had just stayed with Racer X, yeah. I sometimes wonder because Racer X really was was struggling to get beyond where we were. We were always trying to get like a major record le deal, yeah. and, and nobody would sign us. And uh, but it was a great band, yeah. and I'm sure I'm sure we would have ended up going to Japan, having s some success there, and maybe, you know, maybe we would have become like 
you know, a band of a similar level to like Anthrax. Yeah. You know, so maybe right now I'd be on a tour with like, you know, they have the big four tours, or maybe it'd be the big five. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and and that would have been cool too. But I, I guess when I, th I, I start thinking about smaller and smaller details, because to me, um, the writing style of Racer X was very heavy metal. Mm. And heavy metal's a strict art form. It's almost like classical music. There's yeah. there's definite like rules, like you can do this, and you can't do this. And even during Racer X, I was listening to a lot of pop music and a lot of uh, soul music and all, all those different things. And I, th I think I would have eventually wanted wanted to break out of that and break the, the heavy metal rules. Yeah. And maybe, you know, like, like with Miss, obviously I do my solo career and other things too. And my solo career is sort of like my rule breaking you know, it's just where I can be completely free and try all this stuff that, that I want to try. Yeah. But uh, th that's sort of what I think about. I think, like, what if, you know, if I continued with Major X, where would, where would we have gone? Would we ever have gotten the major deal? You know, yeah. What would have happened? And Mr. Big survived also the grunge invasion, let's call it like mm -hmm. that. Uh, why do you think you did, and a lot of other bands, you know, hard rock bands, especially American uh, didn't you know survive that period which was the well it was first surviving I mean I, we actually broke up for a long time yeah um, but you know fortunately people still remember us now which is nice and we um, I mean I think mr. big is, is famous for having done well internationally yeah and but I, I mean leaning to it was 92 so yeah. you know Never mind, already came and... <laughs> right. but, and you know, and most of the 90s, mm -hmm. all the... All, so many of the big bands from the 80s sort of... Yeah. You know, you didn't hear so much from Dokken or Rats yes. or Great White or, you know, uh, Warrant. And we, we were fortunate because internationally we still did really well. It was, it was really just America yeah. that was sort of okay, overtaken by the, the okay. Pearl Jams and the and Nirvanas. And I'm kind of thankful for for uh, that music, not so much for the music, but, but for the haircuts. Because it was, it was really difficult to maintain that giant hair. And, That's a good and, point. And, and now I can have you know, any kind of hair, it doesn't matter. So that was, to me, that was one of the good things of the 90s. <laughs> Great. Um, uh, do you think that um, is hard to combine, in a sense, such huge personalities and huge talents uh, as Mr. Big are in the same room. I mean, when you're all in the same room, how it's diff difficult to manage that? Well, we, at, at this point, we, we've in the old days, I was with the band for eight years, and then we've done recently we, I mean, this whole year we've been on the road, and we did an album to get in the studio, and we did a tour before that. So uh, it's almost ten years. Of being together, so we know each other really well. So really, any any problem that's supposed to come up is it, not new to us. Okay. It's like, oh, you know, that's that's what that guy does. That's what this is what this guy does. This is what yeah. I do. And, been there, done and we that. Just, and we, we just accept it. It's like you know, okay. that's like a family. You know, I might, I, I might, and we, there's things we love about each other, things that are annoying about each other, but you know, we know to accept it. And and that that sort of makes it makes it work. What's next for Mr. Big now? I don't know. Well, we've got three more shows in Indonesia, mm -hmm. and uh, and I think after after that, I'm, I'm not sure. I mean, it, we, this year has been so much touring that I really want to stay home for a while. Okay. So uh, I've actually I've, I've set up like a month of of guitar lessons at Musician, Musicians Institute. Yeah. Because I just want to play with the kids, and there's there's so many uh, guitar ideas I need to practice, and that's a great place for me to do it. Okay. It's to jam with the students. Oh. So I just want to go home and play guitar. I noticed that uh, recently you use uh, some kind of headphones. I don't yeah. know if that's a noise reducer or a headphone where you can hear what you want on stage. That's what, both. Okay, it's both. So, so why you decided to to do that? I mean, is that a warning for young? people? people in well, a sense almost, that maybe high volumes can be dangerous well almost all almost all musicians in rock in pop or rock music wear wear in ear monitors yeah. which basically do the same thing mm. but for some reason i don't like the in ear monitors they just they don't feel comfortable to me okay they they never sit maybe the sh 
inside of my ear is a weird shape or something. I don't know. <laughs> and uh, so I, I, I just prefer the headphones. Mm -hmm. And I think they block out the sound a little better. Mm -hmm. Plus, they're really easy to take off. So if there's a quiet part in the song, right. I can take them off and really hear the dynamics of the room and, the, and hear the audience. Uh, and there, uh, there came a point, like, I'm sure when I was younger, I think I cared more about, like, i got to look a certain way. Okay. At this point, you know, I'm 45 years old. <laughs> I, I don't care anymore. I, I just I want to sound great. I want to, you know, save my hearing. I just want to be, be a good musician. And and uh, to me, the, the, the headphones, I mean, people wear them in the studio all the time. It's not, uh, you know, people jog with their headphones. So, yeah. And, and I, I have no great hairstyle that I'm protecting. So. <laughs> And after the reunion of Mr. Big, which are the songs that gives you still, you know, a lot of chills to play live? Believe it or not, I still love to be with you. Oh, really? Uh, one of my favorite things about Mr. Big is singing. Mm -hmm. I love when we, we, we sing harmonies together. So I, I really like the songs like, that have a lot of harmonies. Green Tender Sixties Mine, Just Took My Heart. Um, in, uh, in Japan, we were covering a Crosby, Stills & Nash song called Carry On. Mm -hmm. And then it a lot of harmonies in it. We do a, a remake of the Three Dog Night song called, um, uh, what's that one? Uh, I can't remember the name of it. It's For You. Uh -huh. And uh, that's that's a, kind of an amazing harmonies in that one. So I remember also 30 Days in a Hole. Yeah, 30 Days in a Hole is oh. great harmonies. Yeah. So you know, even though a lot of people, when they think about Mr. Big, they think of like, oh, crazy guitar and bass playing. But... Um, I like it for the singing. Yeah. Okay. And um, the moment you interchange instruments on stage, uh, who had the idea for that? And when it very first happened? And how you decide which songs to play that way? Well, it happened long enough ago where I can't remember whose <laughs> idea it was. Uh, but I think we all like each other's instruments. Like I really enjoy playing the drums. Mm -hmm. uh, I think everybody enjoys playing the drums, actually, <laughs> and I know Eric. Eric likes playing guitar, and so uh, you know, it, it's. Uh, I think uh, well, the one we've been doing a lot recently is "Smoke in the Water," yeah, which is, of course, is, you know, a, a very famous song, and that that one I, I, I encourage the band to do, and and one thing is, you know, obviously, we're not as good at those other instruments, so we got to play pick a simpler song, you know, if it was. Uh, Colorado Bulldog. I can't play that drum part. Okay. You know, and uh, so "Smoke in the Water" is a nice, simple tune, so we can all, even though we're on different instruments, we can still play the parts. And I think we're having such a good time yeah. that even if we're, even if there's some mistakes, the audience still likes it, and and we certainly do have a great time doing that. That's very cool thing. I mean, it's something that you know everybody would like to do, but that you know not anybody is able to do. So. Yeah. That makes a difference, believe right. me. <laughs> okay, so thank you very, very much for your time. Uh, do you, you're welcome. Do you want to leave any uh, last message to the Italian fans? Uh, a salute. Oh, my goodness. Well, thank you for listening to my music and being interested in my guitar playing. Uh, it's, it's really, I love my job. I love to play guitar. And so when I'm not here playing guitar, I'm at home playing guitar. Because <laughs> it's one of the most fun instruments in the world with the possible exception of the drums, which I think are a little bit more fun, but I'm not quite as good at the drums, so I'm going to stick to the guitar. All right, uh, whatever instrument you play, enjoy it, and uh, if you don't play an instrument, enjoy listening. That's it, rock and roll, and Happy New Year when it comes. Thank you, Paul.